guys, it is time for another sketchbook update. Uh, this first illustration is just kind of like a monster sketch. Uh, she's kind of like a wizard. My wife and I have been watching um, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. So right here you can see me kind of just, at first I just always start sketching. And I was going to do a werewolf or something and decided not to, decided to do, do a demon. Uh, you can see the rough sketch, kind of, this is the initial idea and I had these really long ears on this one but I later decided I didn't really like those the look of that very much but you can kind of see the full pen and ink illustration right here Pre predominantly these sketches are pen and ink at first um, I use one uh, the Jacinki ink brush in procreate and I just do an ink sketch and then later on I'll decide if I want to add colors and stuff like that so you can see I went away from the ears and added these kind of cool horns. Uh, one cool thing about working digitally too is you can work additively and subtractively like so I'll do real dark areas like the horns and then I'll use the eraser to kind of like you know do little line work there. So yeah anyway that's that sketch. We'll go to this next one. This was actually a pen and ink illustration I did for a comic book cover. I just saved it to the iPad because um, I sold that so I didn't have an actual visual of the comic book, but that was, it was inspired by uh, Frank Frazetta and somebody commissioned to have Bullet and Conan on the cover of the comic book. So that was the cover I did, which I like the way it turned out, it's pretty cool. I like the pile of skulls they're sitting on, but I definitely used the battle axe for, uh, as uh, referenced Frazetta for that, and I love Frank Frazetta. He's one of my favorite artists ever, just amazing work. So there's that one. This was kind of a cool uh, just concept illustration. I was doing those blazer illustrations and I wanted to maybe think of a concept for like blazer dancers, like pinup style. So this is kind of what I came up with with that, which, you know, this is a full color, uh, but still pretty rough. I always, even with the full color, more rendered stuff, I always keep the ink work a little bit more rough because I love I like the way that looks digitally um, if I keep it too clean I feel like it looks too artificial so I like that more um, that pin and ink very rough look this was kind of just a really quick sketch of Superman versus Thor uh, I'll show you the video of that so you can kind of see how the sketch now with this start I block out the characters with uh, just a big thick square brush um, and I feel like I do that and because I do it both ways. Sometimes I'll just use line sketches to rough something out, but sometimes with big bold uh, like painterly sketches like that, you can get the weight of the characters a little bit better. Um, and I think I prefer that. Sometimes I just don't do it. So, but yeah, this is you can see it's a pretty quick sketch. Uh, I kept it really rough, like the line work and everything, but. With this, with sketching, I feel like I don't want to get too far into rendering and things like that with some of these because I want to still learn. Um, and I feel like the faster I do them, the more I do, the more I learn. So these are really interesting and I really like the way these look. Basically what this is, is going back to my old sketchbook videos as far as style goes. Um, I do a ba brown background with a little bit of a stipple texture on it. And you can kind of see me do that in the video. But I used a uh, pencil on this, uh, HB pencil um, in Procreate, and then kind of pencil draw it. So it gives it a little bit different look than some of my pen and ink stuff. As you can see right here, it's, it looks very like, like a pencil drawing. And I noticed this got a lot of really good response. I think it's probably because it's very similar to what my old style used to be. But the advantages of this is you can work subtractively and just the power of the brushes to alter things. So I start out with that hairstyle and this is totally the advantage to digital is seeing things and being like, eh, I don't really like the way that looks. Um, and so you can change the entire thing. You could do that with pencil too, but it's not as forgiving as it is with digital being able to just start over and doing tricks to make things go a little faster like his hands I duplicated his hand and just reversed it because there wasn't really interesting anything interesting going on there so I didn't need to redraw it and waste time um, and I feel like getting becoming more efficient especially if you're looking at doing concept art or something like that 
is a really good uh, practice to have. So that's kind of, and then this guy, They're, these are kind of wizards, uh, just really weird wizard concepts, but I really like the way that one turned out. Uh, this is, uh, they released the Star Wars trailer, um, and so I decided to do a Star Wars sketch. So that is this one. And again, you can see I block out the shapes. When I do really dynamic drawings, I like to block out the shapes. Like I said, I feel like I capture the weight of the characters um, a little bit better. Um, and so, yeah, this one. And again, getting back to working digitally, why I prefer working digitally is, so on this illustration, I originally started with the sword out like this, and I just didn't feel like it looked natural. It didn't look right. So then I changed it a few different times. I changed her angle to make it just flow a little bit better. And also compositionally, I felt like the head in this space, I rotated her a little bit just to give myself a little bit more of a buffer around there. And that's probably my graphic design um, spacing, spacing issues coming out. I really like to have a nice, you know, buffer between things, a quarter of an inch, if not more, because I don't like po creating points of tension unless it, it's intended. Um, and I felt like having a nice flow at this angle through everything really kept that movement going, like the head really flying towards you kind of thing. And then also right here, I felt like that leg really stopped the motion of the image so I changed it to coming up here so the body's moving with everything now and it just keeps that flow going through the drawing which um, really made made such a huge difference in it so you can kind of see me add the colors a little bit and this is a little bit further along rough sketch but yeah still um, still pretty rough but a little bit further along than some of the other ones uh, this is a couple of concepts of some gunslingers, and I really like the way this one turned out. I love the, love the little monkey guy. Uh, so with this one, um, it's kind of that it's that pin and ink style with that pencil background. So uh, kind of a mix of the both. And this is just me experimenting. You can see how different she looks, just the colors and stuff like that. And that's the other cool thing working on an iPad versus pen and paper, I can duplicate her the whole drawing and as many times as I want and change as many things that I want. So if I were working for a studio or something like that, which I don't, <laughs> um, but just for practice sake, you know, I had a hairstyle like this. I tried a few different hairstyles. Uh, right there I duplicated her, but I decided to go with a completely different character instead and I drew this little monkey guy. So it's kind of like a little bit of a steampunk um, different universe type illustration that I went for on this one but yeah like really like the way that one turned out it's really I feel like she's got a very unique face um, the monkey's interesting but I, I like her face and I like her a lot because she feels like a, an individual like a real character versus just a generic face generic character I feel like she has personality, which is something I always try and capture a little bit of. So for the last part of this video, I wanted to open this drawing right here. I have the color turned off so you can see the colors on a different layer. Um, it's real subtle colors. A lot of times I'll do the colors like this one and then just change the opacity. So that's what it would look like if it was fully opaque. And I just do that so that I can keep the colors real subtle and have some of the background of the drawing come through. But I'm gonna turn the colors off right now and just show you what pencil. I use the HB and the 6B pencil when I'm doing these sketches. And with these, this drawing, it was really about, you know, just capturing that same uh, sketch quality to that I do on my sketchbooks, which is on this kind of paper, which is tone tan. And sometimes the, the tan I use in the background varies because I don't need to, you know, worry about that too much. I can do whatever color I want. But you can kind of see, um, I'll shrink it down because this is the style I, size I normally work with. And you can kind of see that it, it acts just like regular pencil. And I mean, with this, when I'm sketching like this, it really feels like just 
uh, sketching in my sketchbook. Um, I do basically the same process. Uh, the only thing I do a lot better now that I never did or I didn't do a whole lot of when I was sketching in my sketchbook is I do a lot more thumbnail and start out with the thumbnail because let's say if I'm starting a sketch I'll start real loose you know just barely picking the pencil up um, and then I might take that layer after I get everything sketched out and blah 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 like that and then I'll just reduce the opacity on it and then do my finished line work right over the top like this so then I can get real sure lines and that's a, a really nice advantage of working digitally and you that's how you work uh, when you're in that's how I work when I'm in a sketchbook is you know I use a lighter pencil and I get my sketches all done um, underneath and then I go over the top with more finished lines, um, but I do feel like working digitally, I've ha got all the same advantages, or all the same, the same look and everything, but with just more flexibility uh, as far as adding different types of color, changing colors on the fly, things like that. So, so that's the video, you guys. I hope you liked it. Um, I'm, I don't know if you noticed, but I've tried to up my game as far as video production stuff. I'm trying to get a couple of videos a week up, uh, which is a, probably a sketchbook update because I've been drawing so much that I have tons of sketches. I try to keep the videos to 10 minutes, so it's normally five to six sketches per video. But then also, I've been trying to do these, which you probably saw this one already upload. This is Drawing Monsters, and this is me sketching in my old sketchbook because I really, something about just, you know, sketching in, on real paper, um, even though I don't think it's as efficient or effective as sketching digitally or drawing digitally, it's still something that keeps you, I don't know, it's an intangible thing that is enjoyable. So I'm really trying to make sure I do one of these videos a week as well where I just sketch random stuff. So anyway, um, thanks for watching guys. If you haven't subscribed and if you like my stuff, make sure you share it because that's what helps me out. So uh, I will catch you guys later. Thanks.